apologies. <laughs> That's because I am in possession of the Power Stone. Baldur's Gate 3 has had its full release, and just like Divinity Original Sin 2, also developed by Larian, I wanted to wait before picking it up. And I'm glad I did, because now I can play through it all surprises without trying to surmise the plot in my head for years, before being able to play the rest of it. Just like Divinity, I would like to be able to play through the whole story as a class I love, not knowing that it is trash until right at the end of the story, when my multiplayer partner who played as an ice mage killed me because I spent every turn doing no attacks, instead falling over on my ass because I was standing on an icy surface. That was too slippery for me to walk across. I wish I could say I was surprised when this happened, but I wasn't. I did this consistently through the whole playthrough and made absolutely no adjustment. As rich as these games are for roleplaying, sadly there is no being able to roleplay a smart person in real life. The game, just like Divinity and just like D&D, is roleplay heavy. Every character on a creation screen has a pre-made backstory, expertly crafted and wonderfully voice acted, but I'd already prepared an origin story of my own. This was my chance to be smart, to set things right. You see, one day I was just sitting in my hut, watching on as the sun set over a grateful universe, when this thunder mage rolled up and cut my head off for no reason. WTF, man. Anyway, he left pretty soon after, and a couple hours later my head had grown a new body, and I would now have to travel the world with a baby body, looking for my fully grown body which presumably grew ahead and has run off somewhere, and I'd have to travel the world with a clever fake name so as to not get caught out. Mr. Than Orbalstein. Sensible. Commanding. Sadly, sometime after spending an inordinately long time customizing my genitalia on a character creation screen, we get picked up by a struggling pet store that is trying to sell people on these new tadpole type things. Some Karens attack the pet store and we manage to escape. That's when I meet Dr. Grundy. <laughs> You see, in my naivety, I should have known this was going to happen. I was but a mister. He is a doctor. He is already superior in title. But not only that, he is now superior in body as well. I miss. I'm being thrown around like a folding chair from underneath the ring on a Saturday night at WWE Raw. But Mama didn't raise no quitter, so for every wrongdoing there would be a right doing. After all, there must be balance. I'd vowed that everyone bad would be gooded, whether that be by dialogue or acts of retribution. And because absolutely everyone is hyper mean in this game, this happens a lot. This is your end. Too heavy. Well, we don't have we don't have to deal with her. She's never alive. Nothing will stand in the way of Mr. Thanobelstein, a being of pure destruction. But you know, just disguised as this cute little guy. And I wasn't about to let anyone even remotely threatening off the hook. Yeah, what's your name? Pondering my name won't get us off this ship. Are you okay? Can you can you have you never shoved a woman? <laughs> Anyways, the pet store crashes and we find Shadowheart on a beach. Doctor Grundo took her mobile phone, so now she's mad. This is threatening behavior, so we deal with it in kind. Just, just push her. Bitch. She dead. There we go. <laughs> oh no. Hey, come back here. You would sacrifice yourself to Geich. Such tiring mediocrity. Your violence hasn't gone unnoticed. It just ended the cutscene, like, instantly. Unfortunately, Dr. Grundle feels how I pushed and then killed Lazel was perhaps too threatening and prescribed me my own staff right up my ass. We figured we may have stuffed up, so we take the corpses and stuff them in a barrel at camp. Now, this is all fun and games, but by this point we'd been playing for an hour and 50 minutes, what should have taken us 15 minutes. So we agree we will apply ourselves and move forward with the story while actually making an effort to progress. My name's Astarian. Oh, I was in Gate when oh that's the name. Astarian. Watch this. <laughs> Punch him! Oh, don't, don't! Oh, what? Alright, do we take him back to the camp now? Every every character's hostile, dude. The second I meet a friendly one, we'll keep them. Right? Like. Yeah, true. Sure. It needs sustenance to survive. And with your very body, you can provide. Look at my fucked up knees. Kiss him! What's wrong with you? you kiss, if that will save his life, a little kiss, a little peck on the tentacle. You fucking kiss him. What, what are you, what are you, like, you're not secure enough? And you're, you're like, heterosexuality, you can't kiss a man? <laughs> <laughs> There's blood on my hands. <laughs> you can take it with you if you want. I'm a killer. <laughs> I'm a cold-blooded killer. I'm Gale of Waterdeep. Gale. If he's friendly, he can stay. 
I don't know what the hells you are, but that's our ship. Grundy falls through the floor and has to fight the entire bandit camp underneath the cathedral. Meanwhile, I'm literally being pushed around as a dying corpse at the surface. After some time, Grundy solos them and wins. Has this epic adventure going through the underground ruins, and I'm just sitting here. A corpse on the floor, thinking about these magical pop rocks I found a few years back. Dr. Grumpy successfully fights his way back to me and we're finally faced with an opportunity to revive the party's WWE ringside folding chair. But we hadn't noticed that when Gale is dead, he emits fart stink in a death cloud that does necrotic damage. Which means when I'm revived near him, I instantly die. Leaving Gronky in the precarious situation of having to fight off four bandits with only five HP remaining. Alright, we're, we're, we're gonna try uh, a strat here. And I can do this. <laughs> I died. Wow. By this point, we have learned that if anyone is actually nice in this game, they come with massive downsides, such as how he emits fart stink in a death cloud upon death. So we agreed we'd have him with us for now, only until we find a replacement, which leads us to this room. Yeah, that's fine. The perfect place to drop him off until we figure out how to eject him from our party entirely. So the story so far is the pet shop owner who we have since killed and shoved in a barrel at camp sold us some faulty tadpoles which are now in our brains. We need to find a healer to help us remove this, or we'll die basically. So we find a settlement, rescue some people outside who are also very mean because no one is nice in this game. And who the hell are you again? Oh! <laughs> Even going so far as to continue to defend the camp's inhabitants from infiltrators trying to kill them. And even then the people we rescue are totally socially hostile towards us, seemingly for no reason. This one here for instance goes full schizo and accuses me of having ulterior motives when we came to our rescue. We literally just wanted to pull the tadpole out of our brain, what, what is your issue? We're just trying to have a nice holiday, you know, since our traumatic experience at the pet shop. Just want to look through some, some telescopes mm. and shit. <laughs> what is this cutscene, dude? <laughs> Wasted my time. It's just... <laughs> it's so mad, dude. It just comes back to you just stand like, oh, I can't look out the telescope, I'm not tall enough. <laughs> <laughs> we explore the local flora and fauna, but even the animals are assholes. Gotta finish the job. <laughs> we stuff the squirrel in our corpse barrel, and we progress deeper into the camp, searching for the healer. Grundy goes AFK, so I get some well-deserved revenge for all those times he used me as a weapon. Even though he single-handedly killed like 10 bandits at one time and to save me, and, and really he should be revered as a hero. But no. We break out this repulsive goblin girl from prison because she's the single nice person uh, thing we have encountered without a single downside yet. And she learns us about a healer of their own in their camp. We kill this owl bear pig thing. We're both traumatized by the baby owl bear pig. <laughs> oh no. It seems like a nice NPC, but then it immediately cannibalizes its mother, leaving us still with the repulsive goblin girl we rescued as the lone nice NPC in the game so far. What the fuck? Oh, fucking hell. We go back down into the crypts to get this one NPC we learned about who will stay at our camp and allow us to revive characters and refund our skill points for some gold. This is near where Gale is still currently being carpet bombed by the US military. He sends us a text with some instruction on how to get a revival scroll to bring him back to life. But obviously my big head and big baby body are hard to navigate through the literal flames of hellfire. So Dr. Grunner uses Gale's scroll of revival on me and I rise from the ashes with my big head and big baby body. I'm immediately killed by the fart stink death cloud again and now we're extra mad at Gale. <laughs> we unlock the revival guy in the ruins, use him to bring Gale back. Now whenever we have a bad day or a dull moment, we return to camp. Please don't turn around. Oh fuck. <laughs> we find Gale and we beat the shit out of him. We pay the gold to revive him and then steal the gold back from the revival guy. This, much like with Netflix, is instant gratification. Plus, it's free. Anyways, we figure that's enough for now because the tadpole thing is probably about to burrow its way through our brain to more important parts of the body like our ass. So we continue through the settlement to look for the healer. I notice some conservatives complaining about the greens and go to investigate. Such is the immense power of our tiny waddle that by walking up to these NPCs, we activate a fight sequence and a cutscene depicting the brutal murder of like a refugee and the deliberate extermination of similar refugees because they aren't white elves. <laughs> Oh. What was that all about? 
There goes Sean Bean. Did Clean we do something it. wrong? I, th I think so. This was a cause of great confusion, but as you can see by our fighting style, we are obviously acting in self-defense. Jay, I'm, I'm gonna press J to see what the update on that quest was. Um, risk, save the refugees. Kaga died before the Typhlings were forced out of the grove. Yep, she's dead. End the conflict. Zevlor died before he could lead the Typhlings to safety. Kaga, leader of the Druids, ordered the Tieflings to leave. Zevlor, uh, uh, yeah, everyone's dying. Hey, uh, it seems like there were problems before we got here. Yes. <laughs> yes, there were. And that, 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 uh, Zevlor guy asked us to sort them, but instead we just uh, started a civil war instead. All we did was was go towards the the quest marker. Yeah, I don't know what they want. From yeah, I don't know what they were expecting. It's way too much pressure to put on us. It's put on me. I, I'm just a little purple man, I'm trying to trying to make a change in my life. You know. It's at this point right here, watching all these villagers kick a bear to death, that we realize our actions have caused the complete and utter destruction of the grove, our only safe location. This means we're also responsible for the death of the healer, who was going to help us remove our faulty pet shop tadpole. But there was still hope in the great beyond. That repulsive goblin thing we freed told us there was a goblin camp with healers that could help, and help we would soon need. Oh, oh, the area oh, just above my penis is in a lot of pain. Oh, it's right there. Oh. oh, my abdominal, like, section right above the groin. Uh, look, oh. if you if you look directly at my penis, right and then look, my and, cheeks. and then look up a little bit, you'll see the area I'm talking about. Uh. Oh, oh, what the fuck? What the hell are you doing? I think these two are going at it. Apologies, I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, is there a... <laughs> the fucking... Here we go. Here comes Grundy with the steel barrel. <laughs> oh. No! Fuck you. Yeah, yeah, I can't say I didn't see this coming. Fate spins along as it should. Just that purple fuck that you used to travel with. Is she dead? Oh. Is he knocked out? Yeah, the, yeah, that that was non-lethal. You see all the uh, all the knockout juice on the floor? I can't pick him up, there's... He's too heavy. That's alright. The next best thing. <laughs> Wait, did that kill them? <laughs> yeah, they're both dead. <laughs> it's, been, it's been a tough journey, isn't it? Yeah. It's been... It's been... It's been, it's been hard on us. This whole... Erection... I mean, I mean, this whole journey. It's not been a good time. There've been down times, good times, hard times. There've been times. There've been times I thought about the times that are about to come. Okay. I'm just gonna nudge him off. See ya. <laughs> Get out. Oh yeah, you could just help me out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I could, I could uh, hop over there and help you out, but or I could, I could push this guy down again. Yeah, push him again. Oh. Yeah, come up here. That's exactly what I want. <laughs> I love that song, dude. Bro, I push my it? fingers into my ass. Us. It's the only thing that slowly. So we're so, so we're lost, and we encounter this big fella. Now, no matter what we did, this thing was going to kill us every time he reloaded. We spent two hours down here. And we were getting our poo pushed so hard that the salt levels were too much. So we put the game down for the night. Here is the very first moment of the footage from the next day. Um... And it was at this moment that we knew, we knew the game would be a breeze. So we continued with reckless abandon, ignoring Gale's new friendly NPC difficulty mechanic that makes it necessary that he eats our magical items, lest he explodes. It's just... Danger involved. Looking at my screen. 
That was weird. That was really weird. <laughs> he just like stared at the screen like chewing a piece of gum or something. We ignore him and he'll remain hungry. I pickpocket all of Dr. Grundy's gold and we continue on to the goblin camp where we promised each other this time it would be different. There would be no animosity. We would not fight the goblins. We would not exterminate every living being this time, even though we had differing opinions on what to do with the tadpole in our head. Uh, what do we, what's the plan? I'm gonna speak to the priestess to get uh, rid of this uh, worm thing. I thought we're team fucking mind player. I want to get rid of my, my worm thing. Ah, uh, we'll get rid of the worm thing. Ah, oh, my ass. Ah. Oh god! Ah, oh, my ass! Ah. The floor here is lovely. But we were determined to make things right, enjoy our time with the goblins and traverse their camp as allies. Even at times helping them with some tasks. Grundy helped them torture some innocent guy. Oh. And I went to go help some other guy, but it turned out I was simply caught up in some deranged sexual fantasy. And I was stuck in this BDSM dungeon for way too long. Simply face the wall, and we can begin. I'm going to bust! Oh. Ah. Such resilience! Ugh. Let the world recede. You will neither hear the priest nor feel the blow. So stoic, dear one! A pity! Sweet child, while I enjoyed that, I'm afraid your reaction was... <laughs> you look down or depressed. Let's go to my chapel. I'm going to hang out with her in a chapel. You, you wait here. Yeah, I don't, don't want to be a part of that. We need to fish that thing out before it eats any important parts of your brain. I'm getting cured, man. So drink this. It'll purify ya. You I will drink whatever you hand me. Flex of werejackal blood. It's a potion of sleep. I I try. I don't know what it is, but I trust her 100%. <laughs> Seeing you. I can't believe she betrayed me. There was no sign. Now, this was already plan B for getting the tadpole ripped out of our head. Not only was I stupid enough to listen to Grundy, who encouraged me to drink the potion. I was stupid enough to think that maybe, you know, it was just surgery anesthetic. After all, there were no signs the goblins weren't beings of immense sanitary standards. And I was fully confident in the doctor's orders. Still, we'll let Dr. Grunty take the fall on this one. Because in the law, Mr. Thenorbelstein suffers from a disability called He was beheaded by a thunder mage a few weeks ago and should really be provided with more support by the so-called doctor. Anyways, I break through the chains with my legendary strength, remembering the feeling of that sweet, sweet power stone and escape through a hole I literally boot through the ground because I'm a being of unbridled rage and reality can be whatever I want. I meet up with Grundy, who was really, really wanting to keep the goblins on our side and not have a repeat of the extermination of every living thing like in the Emerald Grove. It's locked. And I let him know that the goblins are not on our side, and we are going to have to repeat the extermination of every living thing, just like in the Emerald Grove. Just fucking shut her I put her in a box. The frustration in his voice is certainly present, but for whatever reason, the goblins weren't really hostile with us yet, and we were given a second chance. This means we can complete our search for another NPC somewhere in the goblin camp, the Druid Helsin, who we were also told might have the power to heal us of our tadpole. And by us, I mean me, because at this point, Grundo no longer cares and just wants his tadpole to make him more powerful. We find these kids throwing rocks in an imprisoned cave bear. Again! Again! Peer pressure ensues, and this was our second chance used up. Oh. <laughs> Get destroyed. This man's just holding like a flaming stick. Yeah, don't worry about it. Are we in combat? Yep. We are. Oh, we're in combat with the goblins. What? Oh, we sided with the bear. That's fine. And then I'm sure I'm sure it doesn't mean every, they're all gonna attack us. It might just be this room. Run! Get <laughs> disengaging. Oh, oh no. We can't have that. Uh, they're gonna- they're gonna rat on us, aren't they? I've got it. I know what I'll do. Oh, the big one! Yeah! Yeah, end their lives with the arcane! <laughs> you know what? It had to be done. They were gonna- they were gonna rat on us. It's okay. It's okay. Don't worry, we got this. The courts won't know- the courts will never know the truth. Oh, he's- it's Helson! <laughs> a true friend of nature. Of course, friends of nature. Did you see how we slaughtered those two children? I cannot allow these butchers to threaten my grave. <laughs> the natural order. He has no idea. Has no idea. <laughs> He's got no idea we exterminated his people. I currently have their like sacred idol in my inventory. <laughs> 
The other druids are dead by my hand. What? Anyways, Halston can't cure us and he refuses to leave the goblin camp peacefully. Meaning as long as he is with us, the goblins are not on our side and we're going to have a repeat of the extermination of every living thing, just like in the Emerald Grove. I kill the BDSM guy. We release the guy Dr. Grundy hit in the nuts. We dispose of the goblin leader by pushing him off the rafters repeatedly. But we also get Halston killed, which is very sad. And I use that term loosely, simply because he was unable to cure me of the tadpole, so I really, really, I don't care. Seeing as we're doing our rounds of the entire goblin camp, we find Priestess Gut, whom I trusted completely. Remember me, bitch? The list of people we are aware who can remove the faulty tadpole from our brain is whittling down very, very rapidly. And this is making me very uncomfortable. So we asked that random bard we met in the goblin camp before we exterminated them all if he can help, and he claims he can. If I just peer in your eye, I could quickly... Oh, dear sweet gods! That's just my nose, dude. You don't have to, like, exclaim at my face like that. Let's be honest. There's no way Volo the Bard was ever going to help. So at this point, I'm livid. I steal some more gold from Dr. Bundy, which isn't even considered scummy. You see, he has spent all of our combined tadpole skill points on himself. He claims this is because he didn't know they were shared. But he's a licensed medical practitioner, so really he has no excuse. And because of this, I can't hold it in any longer. Thank you. Yeah, mate, I left him with like 16 gold. You actually, you really did, didn't you? <laughs> That's not even like a fraction of all the stuff I have. I've looted everything. This isn't even a fraction of my true powers. Well, how much did you uh, sell from him? Like, how he much only had like 200 gold. Yeah, it's a good thing I pickpocketed the 250 from you. Anyway, I'll see you later. I was wondering where all my gold went. <laughs> I, like, I like the goblins, man. Damn it. You're the one that decides to start murdering them. Every decision we've made to wipe out settlements has been yours. It wasn't my fault that the bitch was like, here, drink this potion. And I completely trusted her, even though I got that pass, that check where it was like, Th this is, is, she's roofied this drink. Like, you shouldn't drink this drink. My character was like, hmm, I can see the tablet at the bottom of the drink dissolving. And I was like, I was like, you know what? I completely 100% trust this lady. And she locked me in prison. It was her fault. And then, and then you are the one that chucked the stone at the bear and then helped him out, which caused this whole problem. So how about you... you, you... I, I was going to also throw a stone at the bear and you said, throw a sh uh, now turn on them, teach them about how the world works. Hey, quick save real quick. <laughs> You're going to blow the place up. Either quick save or... Wait, 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 let me quick save. <laughs> I didn't quick save. Hey, but did you get a perception check? Because it sounded like you did. <laughs> save yourself. I can't believe this. I'm just gonna run back there. I'm just gonna run back there and play the song. <laughs> we clear the goblin fort and spend 30 minutes trying to solve this puzzle because we got it in our heads that for some reason we had to sit on specific benches, stack torches in what looked like a pressure plate, and read every note and book in our inventory. I even tried placing the idol of Sylvanas we stole from the druids we exterminated back in Emerald Grove. I could upload a full length video of just us trying to solve this little puzzle, lamenting at our misfortune, fighting over which one of us gets to hold the brain cell for that moment. We, you know, if we add our IQ together, we've got at least 150. And I think that's very high. We enter into a spooky underground cave system called the Underdark. We're not sure why we're here, but it's absolutely our only lead at this point. So we continue through here for a moment and are instantly wiped out by a very scary monster, which is very clearly a boss in an area we are absolutely not prepared for. We have a go at exploring in the other direction in the Underdark, where Mr. Thornoblestein uses the remnants of the Power Stone to remove a sword from a rock. I watch Dr. Ted Bundy pickpocket his gold back, thinking I'm not seeing this. But I allow him to do this. The poor doctor constantly farms elves, and I'm a good friend who wants to enable him. I want to validate him. After all, a sad doctor is a bad doctor. And what he doesn't know is that he's merely pickpocketing the hundred or so decoy gold, with the other 3,038 being stored in a box in my inventory right here. So I let him have his chump change. I don't simply say anything because it's a matter of support. And I don't want to make him feel stupid. This is very mature of me. I'm, I'm very mature. Please comment. This is very mature of you. A sad doctor is a bad doctor. It's time to farm some W's, Dr. Grundy. I'm sure he'll see this and he'll appreciate the words of encouragement from you. You're all so lovely. Anyways, it's clear we shouldn't be in the Underdark as just the two of us, so we do the smart thing and backtrack through the wilderness and do some more content for that sweet, sweet XP. We meet someone called Auntie Ethel. Please. You there? Please, I don't know what's coming. <laughs> she needs our help. 
And anyway, we ignore her. And it turns out it was all a test and she didn't need us after all. Big surprise, nice NPC wasn't nice after all, right? So we pursue this thread down to a dingy old hut in the swamps. It turns out Auntie Ethel has a guest. So I pickpocket the guest's gold and we assault Auntie Ethel. Violence hasn't now this might be one of the only times our intuition actually pays off because as it turns out Auntie Ethel is a dirty old hag who appears to be pure evil. This means we're right 100% of the time some of the time. And that's a win for team Mr. Doctor. Auntie Ethel escapes through a fireplace with the damsel we robbed, leaving us ambushed by an entourage of goblins. Let's, let's start a jazz band. Oh, yes, dude! And it don't stop coming and it don't stop coming. Don't stop coming and it don't stop coming. Don't stop coming and it don't stop I beg Dr. Dummy to use me as a WWE ringside folding chair. When my pants come in, my pants, oh my god, Shrek. But he refuses. He instead uses the goblins to destroy the goblins, leaving me as an unused object in his party. So sad. We enter into the fireplace and we learn that more powerful beings than us have tried to stop Auntie Ethel, who is apparently some ancient unstoppable evil. And I'm just a small purple man looking for my large purple body. I put on a very evil looking mask. <laughs> Huh? The mask makes me attack Dr. Grundy. And he deletes me. We return to the camp and take it out on Gale by throwing this human head at him from across the map. Ah, stop it! Grundy changes his skills around at the camp and I do nothing nefarious of the sort in his presence. Uh, what talents are you getting? Uh, I was getting rid of um, that one. That nothing at all. Permanent. Because that wouldn't be wholesome. And we continue on our way through the hag's lair. Yeah, that's it. Come over here. Yeah. Idiot. Don't do this. You want the girl so bad. Fine. Roast. The cage won't last. What do you mean the cage won't last? I thought we were supposed to destroy it. <laughs> Are we killing her? <laughs> oh, did the girl die? Look at her hobbling over to you like. <laughs> She's like, oh. <laughs> she was all like, oh. Why did I find a cure quest update? Why did I that don't know. Did, did we just kill the last cure? <laughs> Fuck yeah, Team Tadpole. Find For the win. Find a cure. Auntie Ethel died before she could help us with the parasite. Halson was defeated before he could help us with the parasite. It's, instead of healing us, Priestess cut and prisoned us. Nettie died before she could help us cure the parasite. A goblin priestess apparently... Oh, no. Nah. <laughs> We found people taking refuge in a grove. Th they're dead. Dude, we have failed every single step of this quest. And we and we did so. We we, we, we tried our best, dude. We, all we can do is try our best, right? I mean, <laughs> we're, we're, That's we're, just, we're trying our best out here, man. There was, there Times was no time. other choices we could have made more correctly than what we have. We have failed every step of this quest so far. The key word being so far. Every fight is way too hard to do without pushing things into the void. So we figure we could use some help moving forward. Dr. Bungie has been talking about this particular tiefling companion he really, really badly wants to recruit. So we head north where he thinks we can find her and encounter these hyenas from which powerful kobolds will spawn and try to kill us. I use the dialogue options to put them down compassionately. You're going to obliterate its whole blood and, swift strike against us. and we were attacked anyway. Dr. Bongos uses his overpowered tadpole powers to convince the kobolds to attack some innocent civilians up ahead because we are too weak and will probably not survive the fight. And hopefully one of those innocents will kill one of them, right? I mean, it making it easier? Mr. Thanobelstein then convinces the leader to Sudoku, edging us closer to leveling up. Another parasite. And we love edging closer. We can't unlock this chest, so we throw it from the highest place we can find, and for some reason this levels us up. Finally, we are prepared for the next leg of the journey, but not until we have this companion we really need to help us progress. I go AFK and Grundy steals some stuff. He's still unaware of the gold stash in the crate in my inventory, but I can't let him get away with this. Not this time. I can't allow him to become too confident. We decide to settle this in a fight to the death in the arena. But Dr. Winky sends Master Thanobelstein through a time-space vortex from which I fall to my death. I hate this. Oh. <laughs> what is happening, dude? <laughs> and 
don't you forget it. He wins, which is just the wildest thing. Who'd have, who'd have thought he could just throw my my 35 kilo body across the map in the fashion he does? It's it's extremely embarrassing. So I simply used the time stone to roll back our save to the previous point where I had all of my inventory, meaning I never lost it in the first place. This is a huge uncontested victory. Imagine not being able to load the game. We're supposed to make some final preparations for the next leg of the journey, so I asked Dr. Grundy to read his spell descriptions to me, which I'm not listening to. It was it was simply a trick to, you know, you know, to the final preparations and stuff. I feel like you want me to go through them so that you can fucking rob me. <laughs> of course not. It's a good idea though. Fuck out of my metro, you little <laughs> fucking goblin. Come here. We tracked down the companion Dr. Grundy was so desperate to recruit. To fuck off, mate. She, <laughs> she doesn't join us. But hope isn't completely lost because we can recruit hirelings from Withers at our camp. Naturally, I choose Sir Fuzzlelump. And while Grundy chooses his companion, I steal the gold back from Withers. We return to the goblin camp to finish off exterminating the final remnants of their kind, just to round out what we did for the folks at the Emerald Grove. I spend the majority of this battle dead, obviously. We return to the Underdark, this time four strong to challenge that spooky boss creature that killed us. Fortunately, the new companions in our group managed to distract the boss long enough that Dr. Stinky can simply push him into the abyss. <laughs> Come back over. Another victory for the good guys. We make our way across Mushroom Kingdom and infiltrate Princess Peach's castle. We cook some hashish in this giant tower bong, which activates the elevator, and we head up to the top. This is where we find this thing with googly eyes. His name is Bernard, but we all know it's just Steve Jobs and his Apple iBody 5. This is a difficult boss fight, but fortunately we have a tried and true strategy for every boss and fight in general. Just standing there, he's like, I don't know what the fuck to do. I've lost confidence. I... I'm ashamed. <laughs> you, can, you can just hear the dial-up tone in the background. He's just waiting for the elevator to come down. He's just actually staring at the door to the elevator. He's a bit too close, but let's see what works. <laughs> I can't open it. You got that one sorted. Check this out. Just let me blow it up. So That's the plan. I'm just gonna get started. Oh, there's something in there. There was something living in there. <laughs> <laughs> the way you said that so suddenly. There's something living in there. <laughs> yeah, it's over, okay. Yeah, there was just some dude in here, man. He's like some dwarf. You see a fella on his own on your way in. Dwarf. Balin's his name. <laughs> She's asking about Balin. <laughs> what do we say? Uh, um, y yes, 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 I've met him. <laughs> Extra prepared to continue. <laughs> At this point, we'd done most of the Underdark, except for a small fraction of it to the southwest. So we head over there to investigate. I'm not sure what happened, but Dr. Grundo Donkey has caused combat with another group of NPCs, which I think may have been friendly this whole time. Now, anyway, they're reviving skeletons and stuff and surrounded by bodies, so we surmise by this that it's another excellent narrative decision by ourselves to obliterate another faction. I mean, our strategies are still proving relevant, so we see absolutely no reason to change our behavior. Watch me go, witness me. Everyone except Dr. Grundy dies, again, so I begrudgingly hand him every gold. And he cheats the game by leaving battle, going to camp, and paying Withers to revive everyone. Then we steal the gold back because what's he, what's he gonna do, kill us? We return to finish off the enemies with our immense strategies. Yeah, shoot him, Grundles. Okay. We find a boat. And assuming Grundy was with me, we set sail. But it wouldn't be a multiplayer game without at least one instance of someone being completely absent for an important moment in the story. Oh, fuck. Oh, he's so scary. Where are you? Are oh, you leaving me behind? <laughs> See ya. Leave me behind. Halflings only. You, what are you doing on Gex Raft? What are you <laughs> doing on Gex Raft? <laughs> <laughs> the angry face. Oh, Red no, where, Destiny where arrives where all the same. 
Where are you? Oh. You left me behind. You should double click my portrait and see where I am. <laughs> I'm gonna do this. <laughs> I have one strategy, one strategy only. You know, I feel like these guys aren't that smart. There's no shot. <laughs> Blank. What am I doing here, man? A huge thank you to the patrons. You are the push that makes me fly off the ledge and plunge into, like, good health and stuff. So thank you for your support. It means a lot to me. Everyone else, if you enjoyed the video, you can support Old Buddy Best Guest by sharing it with some friends and leaving some random comment. Perhaps try to list some of the good qualities Dr. Grundy has. Wait, no, don't do that because there's nothing to list. Simply comment, I love you, Grundy. This is just what the doctor ordered. And now you don't even have to think about what to comment. Isn't that cool? Anyways, I love you all. See ya.